This video will show how to plot borehole location symbols within Google Earth. We'll also show how to retrieve downhole information by clicking on the borehole location symbols within Google Earth. There are two items that you must consider when creating borehole location maps within Google Earth. Borehole coordinates and the symbols that are used to depict the borehole locations. Google Earth is based entirely on longitude latitude. The program that creates Google Earth borehole maps can either read decimal degree longitude latitude data directly from the longitude latitude fields within the borehole manager or UTM base easting and northing coordinates which are automatically converted to longitude latitude and passed to Google Earth. In order to create a Google Earth map, you must have either UTM Eastings and Northings or Decimal Degree Longitude Latitude Coordinates. Local Mine or State Plane Coordinates will not work. The next requirement for creating borehole maps within Google Earth involves raster symbols. Google Earth uses images rather than vector graphics to draw symbols. The symbol field within the borehole manager will not work with Google Earth because it represents a vector-based diagram. The new raster symbol field within the location table is designed to solve this problem. If you click on the currently displayed symbol, you will be presented with an array of possible raster symbols. To select a symbol, click on it, and that will become the new symbol. So let's make a map. Click on the map option within the main menu and select the Borehole Locations Google Earth sub option. This will activate the Google Earth Borehole Location Map program as shown here. If I click on the Expand button up here, we'll see all of the sub menus that are normally nested or hidden within the various menu limbs. We'll come back to these menu settings in detail later on, but for now, let's generate a Google Earth Borehole Location Map by pressing the Process button at the base of the menu tree. After a few seconds, you should see your borehole locations displayed within Google Earth. If we click on a borehole symbol, Google Earth will display a text box with information about that particular borehole. Now, let's walk through each of the options within the Google Earth Borehole Location Map menu. The Output File options defines the name for the Google Earth compatible file that Rockworks will create. A KMZ file is a zipped version of a KML file. KML is an abbreviation or acronym for Keyhole Markup Language. Keyhole was the name of the Google Earth product before the Keyhole company was absorbed into the Google Earth empire. Now you know. The name of the KMZ file becomes important if you do not plan on launching Google Earth when the program is finished creating the KMZ file. If this is the case, then you'll probably want to use a descriptive name for your KMZ file, like Borehole Symbols. The folder name defines the name of the grouping under which all borehole data will be stored within the Google Earth Places tree. Since you can easily change this within Google Earth, it isn't all that important. Now this next item, the coordinate source, is very important. If you want the program to read the longitude latitude from the longitude latitude fields within the location tab, then select the longitude latitude option as the coordinate source. If, on the other hand, you want the program to read UTM Eastings and Northings from the Eastings and Northings fields within the location tab, then select the Easting Northing option as the coordinate source. It's also important that you specify if these UTM Eastings and Northings represent meters or feet. And that's not the only consideration when using UTM Eastings and Northings. You'll need to make sure that the UTM projection zone, as defined within the main project dimensions menu, are set properly. In other words, life is much easier if you've got longitude latitude locations for your boreholes. Okay, back to the Google Earth borehole location menu options. The scale is expressed as a percentage of the project dimensions. A value of 1.0 means that the radii of the raster borehole location symbols will be equal to 1% of the distance from the southwest corner of the project to the northeast corner of the project, i.e. the diagonal distance. Here's a map where the symbol size is set to 1.0. In this map, the symbol size was set to 2.0, while in this map the symbol size was set to 0.5. The next group of items, grouped under 
the description includes heading refers to the items that will be displayed if the user clicks on a borehole symbol within Google Earth. To illustrate this, consider the previous demonstration. If any of the descriptive items being lithology, stratigraphy, and aquifer data are not checked, then they won't appear in the text box that pops up when the user clicks on a borehole symbol within Google Earth. Now we come to the point labels. The color is the color for the point label font. The opacity determines how opaque or conversely transparent these labels will be, and the scale determines the size of the font. Now this scale number is not expressed in the same manner as the symbol scale, meaning that it does not represent a percentage of the project size. Instead, the scale number represents a Google Earth font size which is wholly undocumented at this time. 1.0 is usually optimal and seems to be equal to about a 10-point font as shown in this example. This label is set to 2.0, this one is set to 4.0, and this one is 0.6. Anything less than 0.6 seems to disappear. The Include Legend option will simply plot the designated raster image or legend file in the lower left corner of the Google Earth display. In this example, we created a raster image using the Windows Paint utility that looks like this. We named it legend.png. So when we click on the process button, this raster image will be plotted within the lower left corner of the Google Earth display. Given that the legend can get in the way of seeing things, especially on a smaller monitor, please keep in mind that it can always be turned off or hidden by unchecking the legend option at the bottom of the places listing within Google Earth. And finally, we come to the launch Google Earth option. When enabled, this option will automatically launch or run Google Earth once the output or KMZ file has been created. The program will also cause Google Earth to automatically load and display the new KMZ file. Now in the event that Google Earth is already running, you'll be asked by Google Earth if you want to load the new file. Be sure to say yes unless you want to say no, in which case you should say no. Thanks for watching.